I'll be brief in my remarks today. Let me start by telling you this. I have never used steroids, period. I do not know how to say it any more clearly than that. Never. As he said, he couldn't have been more definitive before Congress, but in light of his suspension for steroid use, Rafael Palmero is now the focus of a congressional investigation. The same committee which heard Palmero's testimony in March plans to investigate whether he committed perjury when he said under oath he'd never taken performance-enhancing drugs. As part of the investigation, the committee has asked baseball for complete results of every drug test Palmero's ever taken. And Palmero has instructed Major League Baseball to give the committee what it wants. In a statement Wednesday, he said, quote, I spoke with Congressman Tom Davis yesterday and told him that I will fully cooperate with him and the committee. I will provide them with any information they need. And if he or any other committee member has additional questions, I am ready and willing to answer each and every one of them, end quote. Some of those questions will undoubtedly focus on the substance Palmero took, reportedly stenozolol, the same steroid for which Ben Johnson was stripped of his 1988 Olympic gold medal. Doping expert Dr. Gary Wadler explains what Palmero is believed to have taken. If the steroid is stenozolol, I cannot conceive of him taking this unknowingly. It's taken either as a pill or as an injection. It, it's unlikely that it would ever be mixed up with dietary supplements. So to me, it's inconceivable that he would have ingested this or injected this without knowing it. Palmero's old team, the Rangers, has canceled the planned ceremony plan for Friday night to celebrate his 3,000th hit. He's not allowed on the field during the suspension. Other old friends, including a pair of Palmero's Mississippi State teammates, have had mixed reactions to a suspension. You know, I played ball with him at Mississippi State, and then, uh, you know, he and I had a had a little dispute, I guess you want to say, when we signed when I signed a free agent contract. So I know what kind of person he is. When you say what kind of person, I ask again. I mean, what what was it about him? You just don't think that he would tell the truth? Well, I mean, yeah, he's gonna hide. If you saw Rafi today, what would you say to him? What would I say to him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got caught, partner. I don't think that anyone can actually believe that this has happened. Uh, you're looking at a guy that um, played at Mississippi State. Uh, we're talking about Hall of Fame, great home run credentials, great hit credentials. I mean, a guy that, that really, after playing at Mississippi State, would be going into the Hall of Fame, and then this happens? It, it just it, it stabs you in the gut. It's a, it's a bad thing. As for potential perjury charges, they are extremely rare for congressional testimony. Pending the results of its investigation, Congress can refer Palmero's case to the Justice Department, which would then decide whether it merits criminal prosecution. Back to the field. The Indians have won 8 of 10 and as many wins as the Yankees do this year. The two tangle in Ohio, Mike Mussina, has pitched well against the Indians since becoming a Yankee 4-0, but in the bottom of the fifth, he has problems. Jeff Lee for the DH singles here. Coco Crisp scores. The Yankee lead is down to one. One pitch away from getting out of the inning. The 3-2 pitch. Moose doesn't get the call. Now base is loaded. Aaron Boone bloops one in there. And the Indians take a 5-4 lead. Boone hitting 455 against the Yankees this year. Now Ben Broussard began the fifth with a home run. Now he's up again. Singles to right. That plates Belliard chases Mussina. And the Indians win again. They have more wins than the Yankees this year. Blue Jays just fly back in the AL wild card as the night began. White Sox struggling a little bit at home. Not that it matters. They lead by infinity in the central. Orlando Hernandez, 1 and 2, 7 1 6 in his last three starts against the Jays. In the first, bases loaded, two outs. Greg Zahn rips a double to the wall and right. Reed Johnson, Shea Hillebrand, Corey Koski all coming around to score. Blue Jays go up 3 0. Eighth inning. Sox down 4 3, 2 on, 2 out. Jeff Barman gets Miguel Batista. Batista got him swinging in the ninth. Two outs, nobody on. Everett against Batista. Swinging as well. Jays win it 4 3. Sox now just 3 and 9 in their last dozen. First, the Athletics and Twins, who began the night six back of Oakland for the AL wildcard. Rich Harden's been in on the fun. 7 and 1 in his last eight starts and gets Matt Leaproy in the fourth. Jock Jones, a victim as well. Justin Morneau at the plate strikes out for the second time on the night. Harden struck out seven overall, but got a no decision. Kiko Calero into the seventh against Michael Kadire, and it's a swing to Kadire four. 
Second of the game for him. First multi home run game of his career. Twins up 3 2, but the A's tied in the eighth to set up Lou Ford in the bottom of the ninth. Swisher going back. Has it come off the wall? Morrow rounding second on his way to third. He's coming home. Relay from Ellis. Morrow is safe. He's safe, and the Twins win it. Yep, it's a walk-off triple to score. Justin Morneau got just under the tag of Jason Kendall. Twins end their six-game win streak. Ron Gardner said it's nice to see some smiles in the clubhouse for once. And these particular grins are becoming familiar in Minnesota. The Twins lead the majors with nine walk-off wins, and they've come in five different fashions. Only one of the walk-offs came in a home run. That was provided by Jock Jones back on July 20th against Baltimore. All right, to the NL wild card leader. The Astros have won 14 to 16. They began their day two up in the NL wild card. That's Javier Vasquez pitching and Jason Lane at bat. Luis Gonzalez. Oh, what a grab and left. He'd be okay. Easy for me to say. I'm wearing makeup. Top of the six now. Astros up to nothing. Brad Osmus to short. Royce Clayton bobbles an easy double play ball. Inning continues as they get just the one out. Orlando Palmero next to right. Jason Lane will score. And the Astros are going to go up three to nothing as they continue their hot baseball. Willie Tavares next at bat. Rolls to first. Osmus will score. Palmero scores in the throwing error by Connor Jackson. And so the Astros remain red hot. They go on to win. Harold Reynolds, we get a couple hot wild card teams. Astros and A's. Who's better? To the park, Josh Beckett, Matt Morris with the Marlins by the Mississippi. But Beckett pulled by Jack McCann in favor of Ron Vallone in the seventh. First guy he faces, So Taguchi, two for 18, is a pinch hitter this year. So is out of the slump. First pitch hit homer of his career. That includes 10 years in Japan. Cards get four in the seventh, three in the eighth, and protected thanks to Jim Edmonds. Oh, robbing Chris Aguila. And if you're Jim Edmonds, this doesn't even go first on your clip reel. It's about 10th. Get three or four of those a season from the Gold Glover. Unbelievable. Cardinals hang on 9-6. They improved to 9-9 nine and nine against the National League East. Vote for Pedro, the NL strikeout leader on the hill. And in the fourth, he gets some support from Mike Piazza, who goes Rex Kwon Do on Victor Santos. Holy shnikey. Look where that one ends up. Over everything. Piazza's homer, number 391, breaks his tie with Greg Nettles for 45th. There's Pedro. Got racked up by the Brewers last time he saw them in Milwaukee here. He was strong. 105 pitches, 75 strikes. Great command for Martinez, who once again had his A game. The top eight now. Brewers are down 4-3, but the bullpen cannot help out Pedro. Carlos Lee had three homers in 103 July at bats. Early August now, already two homers, six for 11. Ties the game at four. Then top of nine, bases loaded, two outs. Lyle Overbay is clutch, and the Brewers lead six to four. Bottom nine, the Mets are trying to rally. Two on, two out. Carlos Beltran has been a flop for the Mets this year. Grounds out to end the game, and the Brewers beat the Mets six to four, ruining Pedro's good effort. There are myriad ways to win or lose a Major League Baseball game. This may be a new one. Cubs Phillies tied up at three into the ninth. Mike Remlinger, intentional walk to chase Utley in a 3 all game. And another to Bobby Abreu gets the four-finger treatment. Dusty Baker wants his righty. Michael Wirtz. Here he comes. Pat Burrell up. 2-2 two -two count. Here comes the heat. It's a little low. Dusty Baker might disagree. So it's 3-2 to Pat the bat. But the bat missed the ball. Catching Michael Barrett. What do you do? Well, you run Jimmy Rollins back, except he threw to third. What happened, Harold Reynolds? You got the bases loaded. So therefore, the hitter with the swing and miss, he cannot advance because the base in front of him is occupied. There was only one out. Now, the catcher, all he has to do in this situation as Jimmy Rollins is coming down the baseline is make a decision. Do I run at him and run him all the way back to his base? Or do I get him in a rundown and maybe get him at the plate? Because the runner has to advance on his own wrist. They just messed up a fundamental play. Barrett admitted, quote, I panicked. Dusty Baker said, I've never seen anything like that. And I'm with him. Phillies went 4-3.
John Lackey has been hot of late. The first, Miguel Tejada with two out, none on. Lackey got him swinging to get out of the inning. In the fourth, Tejada gets Lackey and swinging again. Tejada swinging one more time. He was actually two for five, but struck out three times. Lackey had seven Ks in the night in six and two thirds. In the six, Angels up 7-3. Vlad Guerrero looks for more and gets it. The double to right brings in Orlando Cabrera. Career RBI number 900 for Guerrero. Angels hang on to win it 8-4. O's have now lost eight in a row. The Red Sox going for their seventh win in a row. The Royals serve up Kyle Snyder. Bottom one, two on for Manny Ramirez. Manny's eighth straight season with at least 30 home runs and 100 RBIs. Just a seventh player to do that. Top of second, scary moment for Manny. Bloop to shallow left, and it's Renteria oh. and it's Ramirez, and they collide. Red Sox manager Terry Francona explains what happened. They are both down. You got guys, it's in no man's land, and I mean, the good news is Manny gets to it, but there, there's just sometimes when it's not a lack of communication, they're just both going after it, and they, they can't avoid each other. Ramirez left the game with chest and facial injuries listed as day to day. Renteria stayed in until the seventh. Bottom five, former Royal Tony Graff, Benino to short. Angel Baroa can't make the play. Veritek comes around to score. Red Sox win their seventh straight. Wade Miller the win. Kurt Schilling got his seventh save. You know, they say life is an open road, but the top plays, they're close to the 10 best from Wednesday. Number 10. Technically a play? I don't know. It's the Grooving Granny. We don't even know that she's a grandma. That's a phony but golden she girl. Loves life. That's a phony golden girl. Number nine, Manny Ramirez homered in the first, and that got belted in the second by Edgar Renteria. Ramirez would have to leave the game. We are both down. And they would eventually take out the cut. Guessing two votes against the top play. The number eight, check out Jermaine J.B. Brown, the 360 reverse windmill slam at the City Slam Chicago. It's Vince Carter-esque. Nicely done. You can see it at 8 Eastern on ESPN. I was asking if I could see more of that. I'm glad. I'll be watching Thursday at 8 on ESPN. Number seven, Joey Gathright. Oh, the great catch. And, but, you know, when you dive, sometimes the face will hit the turf. Mm -hmm. You might want to fly. And when he flosses, there'll be some grass, I think. The grass stains. Enough. That's good for you. Yeah. Number six, John Daly. Force of nature. Big fella trying to drive a golf ball across Niagara Falls. He did it 20 times, didn't make it once. It's right into the hazard. Head to the drop area. Doug Minkiewicz in the fifth. This is a double play. He catches the ball in the air, and then his momentum takes him right to the bag for the double up. Nicely done. Number four, more defense. Reds and Braves. Ooh. Ryan Friel to Felipe Lopez. You feel me, dog? We think the pitcher got a, just a fingernail on that, so that's a 1-6-4-3 double. Bingo. Check your box scores. Number three. What James Mercer is to the shins, Lou Ford is to the twins. Bottom of the ninth, two outs over the glove of Nick Swisher. Here comes Justin Morneau. This song will change your life. Safe! <laughs> winner, winner, chicken parm dinner. The Twins beat the Red Hot Aces. You rhymed twice in one top play. Number two. It's an accident. Marlins Cardinals. Jim Edmonds brought his gold glove to work. He's got seven of those things, not eight or nine, seven of those for making plays like that. Pittsburgh, number one. For the gap in right center field, McCoviak will head toward third. He might score. Big country! You're going to win the 